All right, welcome back to Venture School. Today, we're gonna to talk about gross margins and business models. Okay, so what's a business model and what are gross margins? A business model is the mechanism through which a company provides a good or service to their customer and gets paid for providing that good or service, essentially extracting value from the value that they create. There are lots of different business models out there, right? There is the basic idea of, hey, I manufacture a widget, I take that widget, I sell it to somebody else, uh, and they pay me more than what it costs for me to produce it, and that's my profits, right? Uh, that could be a very simple business model. You have services, so same idea as a widget, but instead it's a service. So, you know, somebody gives somebody a haircut, right? And they get paid for the time that they spent providing that service. Uh, you could have other business models where it's giving somebody access to something. So maybe you've created content or you've created a software product and you are essentially saying customers can come in and they can use what I've built uh, either you know, to consume it like content or to use it like software and pay me a fee or a rent for the privilege to use that product. Okay, but at the end of the day, these business models, these mechanisms, right, are designed to basically identify a customer's pain point, solve it, right, through your business model, and then make sure that you do it in such a way that you can actually capture the value that you've created for solving that pain point. Uh, there are a lot of business models out there. Some are better than others, and some do a better job at extracting value than others, right? If I think about a lot of the different value that could be created and the business models that could be attributed to it, let's go through a good example of one. So let's say that you have a business where what you do is you have individuals go out and they scrape all the data off of websites, right? They just go to a website and they select all and then they copy and they paste it into a Word doc, right? That's their job every day, day in, day out. Let's talk about the business model then, right? What you're going to do is you'll have ultimately this big database full of data that you've scraped off the web and your cost for providing that data will be all the labor of those individuals, right? And so you can maybe charge like per report that's issued, right? Or give them access to the full database uh, and charge them a fee for getting access to that database. And then your cost basis will be having to cover the salary of all those people. Another business model might be you spend a lot of time up front building out software. And during that time, you spend a lot of money and you don't generate any income. But when you're done, you've built a piece of software. And now that software goes out and it does all the work of those individuals, right? Now you could offer the exact same revenue model. You're charging customers to either come in and use the data that you've created or they pay for it on a report by report basis. But your cost in that case is not the salaries of all the people that are scraping the data for you. It's just the cost of maintaining your software. Plus you've got this upfront cost you've had to capture and cover. Both models have different pros and cons, right? One model, doesn't require very much upfront capital to get started. You just hire some people and say, all right, go and select the data and copy it and paste it into you know, our database. Other one requires hiring a bunch of engineers, right? And has a larger upfront cost, but on the backside has much, much higher profit margins and is more infinitely scalable, right? That software theoretically could do the work of thousands and thousands of individual scraping data. All right. So hopefully that you can see how tweaks in a business model and how you approach it can result in different levels of profits. Now, let's talk about gross margins. Now, gross margins or margins in general are simply what you receive as income minus the cost of pro for providing that good or service, right? So gross margins are simply if I sell a widget for $10 and it costs me $5 to produce that widget, then my gross margins are $5. On the other hand, if I am providing a service, right? Maybe I'm providing haircuts. My cost for that labor to provide the haircut might be $10. And so I charge $20 for that haircut, right? My gross margin in that case would be $10. All right, so why do gross margins matter and why do business models matter when it comes to thinking about venture capital? Well, at the end of the day, as a venture capitalist, our goal is to invest early in a company and in a relatively short time period, we're talking five to 10 years, have that company go from essentially being worth nothing or very, worth very little to being worth a lot of money. And there are two big drivers of what drives valuation increases in a relatively short time period. 
And that is the perception that there will be lots of profits in the future and that the company will be able to maintain those profits and that the company is experiencing really high growth, right? To achieve kind of market domination in a relatively short time period. From a gross margin perspective, from a margin perspective and a business model perspective, what you want is businesses that are highly scalable that can generate massive profits when they get large enough. And so in order to do that, you're looking for companies that have very high gross margins and then accordingly very high potential profit margins over time. Here's the other reason too why gross margins matter is a business with very high gross margins is going to be producing a lot more cash that can be used to reinvest in the business and drive future growth. So going back to my prior example, if I am making 90% uh, gross margins, that's gonna give me a lot more cash that I can use to spend on marketing and sales to acquire more customers that want my scraped data than if I have 50% gross margins, assuming that the price point for the data is actually the same, right? That then gives me an advantage where when I go head to head with these other companies, I can spend a lot more on marketing and acquire more customers and grow faster than they can, thereby pushing them out of the market. And because of that, these companies tend to grow faster. And in the future, someday they'll cover all of their operating expenses because typically they have higher operating expenses, right? You gotta spend a lot of money to build out that software. But once it's built and you're making money on every additional sell without having to add more employees or spend more money, right? This becomes super scalable and you can generate massive, massive profits. When Google first started, when Facebook first started, when Amazon first started, a lot of them were losing tons of money every year, but their business models were sound in that they were investing a lot up front to create these platforms that were ultimately highly scalable. And as they generated enough revenue coming in to cover their operational expenses, all the arrest, which were primarily fixed expenses, all of the additional revenue could go straight to the bottom line and generate the massive profits that these companies generate today. Because of that, because of growth from reinvesting the cash from their business and because of the high profitability of their businesses and their business models, these companies end up getting very, very high valuations from investors. So as opposed to, a, you could have two companies, each one doing the same amount in revenue and be valued high, very different based on the revenue growth and, and, the, and also the future potential profits of the business. And so that's what you're looking for. As a venture capitalist, you are looking for companies that have really high gross margins because they've figured out a business model that allows them to generate high profits. Now, there are different business models that are very common in venture capital because this is what VCs look for. Enterprise software tends to be one of those. And the reason for that is because once you write the software, it doesn't cost you very much, if anything, to add one more customer. It's very scalable, right? If I wanna add one more customer, it's just a little bit incremental cost on my server. It's not very much, right? That makes it really great because I can then spend lots of money acquiring those additional users. If I wasn't using a software product, right, and I was just providing the service with human labor, every time I add a new customer, I gotta go hire somebody else to come in and help run the business, right? Thereby making it very expensive to scale up. And as a VC, like I said at the beginning, you want to invest in companies that can grow quickly, generate huge profits so that these companies get high valuations and so you can exit and generate a massive return for your investors. Hopefully that was a helpful description of what business models are, what gross margins are, why they matter in venture capital and why you should be paying extra attention to the financials and the, the profit margins of the businesses you invest in because it ultimately has a massive impact on the potential returns that you can generate. Join me for our next venture school class where we're gonna talk about what makes an attractive market size.